Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm going to fast forward a little bit now from history a long time ago to something a little bit more modern because I'm a transplant here in Wigley. I have not lived here all that long, not as long as Adelia has or Paul. And um, I actually wasn't going to even think about writing about anything, but Tiffany said, oh, it sounds like something you could do, so I said, oh. <laughs> so, fast forward to the 1960s, and I just realized that, yeah, I do kind of look like the 1960s. <laughs> and my piece is entitled, It Was the 60s After All, Wasn't It? Daddy, Daddy, when are we going to see it? I cried from the back seat of my grandmother's pink and white Oldsmobile. Pink and white? Yep, yeah, pink and white. Her old 59 Oldsmobile was pink and white. After what seemed like the longest Sunday drive ever, my dad finally said, it's coming up on your right. Watch for it. I popped up from the floor of the back seat. Car seat? What car seat? Where I had been twisting and contorting my gumby. I stared out the window, afraid to blink. I didn't want to miss it. Suddenly, there it was. The pink house with the huge purple polka dots. It commanded all my attention as we rolled on by at Daddy's Sunday drive speed. I craved my neck to stare at it for as long as I could. It grew smaller and smaller until it disappeared through the back window that I was peering out of while kneeling on the back seat. Daddy, why did those people paint their house so weird? Even though I was just a kid and saw plenty of psychedelic murals, blacklight posters, and the spirit of the flesh commune bus, I knew a house should not be painted in such an unusual fashion. It was downright bizarre, I thought. Oh, they're just mad, my dad attempted to explain. How does being mad make you paint your house like that? I wanted a better explanation. They didn't like the new highway going so close by to their house. Dad added a little more information. But why would making your house weird help? I was still confused. They made it an eyesore, Dad shrugged. It's supposed to get even with the people that built 91. I contemplated this idea as we continued our Sunday drive into Northampton to some potato chip factory that also sold green spearmint flavored licorice in a small shop. How silly, I thought, to make your home ugly just to get back at others. The next time I saw that house, it was still pink with purple polka dots but it also had large green squares in the mix. Horrific. <laughs> I didn't see that house again. When I moved to Waitley 30 years later, I heard that it had moved, been moved, burned down due to careless disposal of fireplace ashes. All that remained after the fire was a pink, purple, and green back wall, a souvenir of a time in protest, so apropos of the era. It was the 60s after all. <laughs> and actually, when Paul was writing about his piece about how they were formerly the town lake or town pond, the town beach, Tritown Beach, it was it kind of like all of a sudden made me remember that oh yeah, <laughs> around that same time was when this house was painted with purple polka oh. <laughs> It was quite psychedelic. <laughs> identify with this one. This one's entitled, What Really Happened in Bailey? My daughter and I sat steaming in the pew. It was a sultry Saturday afternoon in July, and we fanned ourselves as we tried to listen to Father Rue's homily despite the humidity. Rick hadn't come to 4 o'clock mass with us. He had not finished mowing the lawn by 3.15, so we went off to church by ourselves. <laughs> Boom! One gigantic clap of thunder shook then resonated through our tiny church. All heads went toward the stained glass windows. No rain. In fact, it was sunny. Murmurs and shrugs stirred through the stagnant air. At last, Father Ruth spoke. I'll take that as a sign to conclude my homily, he joked, and we went on with the surface after a few chuckles. After Mass, Alexis and I climbed into my old but much-loved turquoise Jeep Cherokee and turned left out of the church parking lot we delighted in heading for home earlier than expected because of the abbreviated sermon. We chatted about what we might do together as a family after supper as we came to the Sugarloaf Street and Route 116 intersection. Usually, we wait at the light and go straight on green, but since we wanted to hurry home all the faster, we turned right at the light and headed toward Pine Street instead. As we rounded the corner from Pine Street onto Long Plain Road, I had to slow down. There were 
were several tree branches lying all over the room. I ran over a few with my 4x4 four four tires and smashed them to smithereens. Green leaves littered the asphalt. As we passed the regional library and the farm auction, my big tires met more debris of the same kind. I wonder what all this is about, I remarked to my daughter as we drove on. We both cried out in astonishment as we drove past Mrs. H's house. There were trees down in her yard. Our mouths agape, we looked at each other in awe. As we rolled up the moderate grade where Long Plain Road meets Christian Lane, we were met by people dressed in neon yellow vests placing a very long saw horse across Long Plain Road on the other side of the intersection. I immediately rolled the window down to explain that that was where I was going. Roads are impossible, man, I was told. But, but we live down that road. We're trying to get home, I explained. Try River Road, was the unsympathetic response in five. I turned my Jeep to the left, fully expecting to turn right at the bottom of the hill and go up Straits Road to get home. At the bottom of the hill, I was greeted by more yellow vests and long sawhorses. Too many trees and wires down, we were told. Can't go there. How are we going to get home? I was by now quite flummoxed. I live on the Hatfield end of Long Plain Road. Try 91, came the moderately helpful response. I spun the Jeep around and headed back up Christian Lane. I drove back up Long Plain Road to the north and turned left onto 116, then got onto Interstate 91 South near the filling station. We were perplexed to all the trees down in the slow lane. We had to drive in the fast lane, even though my old SUV does not go. We got off the highway at exit 23 and circled around by a depot road. Coming up from Hatfield, this end of our street seemed unscathed. When we finally came to our house, we were relieved. Our yard and the home were untouched by whatever it was that happened. Our neighbors, just next door but north of us, lost several trees. So did the house across the street. Trees littered the road as far as we could see. The next day, we read in the Sunday paper that a microburst had hit Waitley. To several of us that lived on Chestnut Plain Road, Christian Lane, Long Plain Road, and River Road, it seemed much more like a tornado. I told my husband I could not believe how lucky we were that I had missed our house. My husband swears it was because Lexus and I were in church. <laughs> <laughs>